welcome back to For Real. I hope you had a great week wherever you're watching from. Thank you so much for liking our videos, subscribing to our channel, and also hitting the bell icon to get notifications when we upload. Doing these things helps us to get more views, and more views means YouTube pays us more money. And all the money we make is donated to charities here in Cambodia. In the description of this, and indeed every video, you can see how much we've given and who we've given it to. You're also welcome to join us over on Instagram for other bits and pieces between videos. Today's accompanying ride is the second half of the ascent of Bukor Mountain in Kampot. Let's get started. Today is Wednesday the 13th of October 2021. First up, we have a quick recap from last week. The story about the proposed development on Rabbit Island struck a chord with many of you. Jeremy was born in the year of the rabbit, and to all of the rabbits out there, we observe a moment's silence for your birth animal island as it was. The developer is a Cambodian tycoon and not a Chinese-owned company, so let's hope the development is undertaken with a little bit of sensitivity. The other big news that we need to follow up on was the Prime Minister Hun Sen's statement that Cambodia could open if COVID numbers did not surge following the Chumben holiday. We're still on track for that announcement, as for the past 11 days, new case numbers have remained low. We're only six days beyond the last day of Chum Ben, so there's a way to go yet. Vaccination of Cambodia's adult population is on track and very close to the 100% mark. 99.24% have received at least one dose of a vaccine and more than 95% have had both doses. This is remarkable and shows that vaccine uptake is indeed very high in the kingdom. Cambodia has yet to reach its intended target of 10 million, and the number is sitting at 9,923,517. Around 72,000 people have been deemed ineligible to receive a vaccine for various reasons, and when this number is added to the number that have had a vaccination, it is very, very close indeed to the 10 million. Nearly 1 million people have received their third dose or the booster dose, and the campaign to administer the third booster dose started in Phnom Penh on Monday. Overall, Cambodia is moving towards its target of inoculating 91% of its 16 million population, with 84.44% of the total population getting at least a single dose of the vaccine. The government has announced that the water festival that's usually held in Phnom Penh in November has been cancelled. Other provinces will still be able to celebrate this traditional festival. A government spokesman said, The economic effects of this cancellation will be small. The government does not want to see many people come to visit Phnom Penh at the same time, because that could potentially lead to an outbreak. The WHO in Cambodia says high vaccination coverage provides a good basis for the reopening of the economy. WHO Cambodia's Dr Lee Ai Len said each sector can open safely and responsibly with balanced, risk-based policies on public health and social measures that incorporate guidance from the health sector. Tourists are starting to return across the region and this is putting pressure on Cambodia to reopen its doors to foreign visitors. Prime Minister Hun Sen is considering dropping the national restrictions and border controls as long as COVID case numbers do not increase significantly. Foreign visas are presently only available for business travellers who have to undergo a 14-day hotel quarantine and a deposit of $2,000 per person is required, as you know. The economic benefits of easing the restrictions would be huge, according to a visiting senior fellow at the ISEAS Yosef Ishak Institute in Singapore. In 2019, the contribution of travel and tourism to Cambodia's GDP was the highest in ASEAN at almost a third. It is estimated that an average 1 in 10 jobs is linked to tourism globally, but it could be as high as 1 in 4 in heavily tourism-dependent countries such as Cambodia. Early signs showing that COVID could remain manageable after Chumben are promising. If the results from this holiday are under control, I believe the government will reopen the country for safe tourists. Let's hope with the large percentage of vaccinated people in Cambodia, we can see the tourism industry restart soon. Thailand's Tourism and Sports Minister has outlined the country's plans to implement a travel bubble this year along borders with both Cambodia and Laos. Mmm, a travel bubble. It's been a while. This is significant because Thailand will allow fully vaccinated visitors from low-risk countries to enter the kingdom without quarantine from the 1st of November. Travellers would be allowed to visit any part of the country, adding that there will be at least 10 low-risk countries including Singapore, Germany, China and the US. Also, more countries will be added to the low-risk list on the 1st of December, stressing that tourists from countries not on the list will be required to undergo quarantine. 
More than 664,000 domestic travellers visited various tourism spots in the country during the three days of Chumben from the 5th to the 7th of October. Kampot had 102,593 visitors and Kep had 96,471 people. Mm, not sure how they came to this amount as I'm sure there was a lot more than that in Kep. Um, Preya Sihanouk had 80,519 visitors. And Siam Reap was in 8th position with 33,222 visitors. You might be interested to know that some visitors opted for accommodation with an attached kitchen or cooking area, while others opted for a family-style barbecue, and there were those who prepared food on barbecue grills. We even saw many families in large vans, living the Cambodian version of van life. Sadly now to a tragic story that is still all too common in Cambodia. A mortar round exploded, killing a boy and injuring two other children in Kempung Tom Province's Prasat Balang district. According to Cambodia Mine Action Centre, the mortar round exploded when children were playing with the UXOs. The children went to care for their cow and found the mortar rounds in the field. They played with them and hit them, causing the explosion. The Cambodia Mine Action Centre has called on people to educate their children about the dangers of war weapons and especially to not touch them as they are very dangerous. In Phnom Penh now, the Court of Appeal has denied an application for bail by a Belgian man who was jailed for life in 2018 for allegedly transporting more than one kilogram of cocaine from Brazil to Cambodia at the Phnom Penh International Airport. The man told the court that he requested bail because he had a two-year-old son and his elderly father and unwell elderly mother urgently needed him to take care of them. Gambler's luck has run out for seven Chinese nationals who were arrested by police for illegal gambling. The seven gamblers were sent to the police station and are being detained. They will be questioned before being sent for legal procedures. Residents of Kandal's Sang district witnessed the horrific sight of a corpse floating in the local river. Residents were greatly alarmed by the sight of a dead body afloat in Basak River. The body was that of a woman around 20 years of age, 1.62 metres tall and with long hair. The cause of death is believed to be drowning. The Ministry of Water Resources and Meteorology has issued a notification stating that Cambodia will be affected by Typhoon Kompasu. After passing through the Philippines, Typhoon Kompasu was in the South China Sea and headed west. Coastal areas of Cambodia may experience heavy rains and damaging winds over the next week. So nothing new, I guess. Vietnam and Laos will also be impacted by the typhoon. Last week, we brought you the story of Cambodian students creating the first drone capable of flying a human being. This week, Phnom Penh High School students have launched the kingdom's first satellite, 50 kilometres above Earth. The students spent five weeks researching and developing the satellite, then they sent it into the second layer of the Earth's atmosphere. A student who was involved in creating the prototype said it was a CubeSat, which is a type of miniaturised satellite used for space research. It was developed by a group of high school students at the E2 STEM school of Priya Yukintor High School. The satellite model is capable of capturing moisture, pressure, temperature and altitude information in the second layer of the Earth's atmosphere and of capturing images from the air. The satellite launch is a stage within a larger competition and the team looks set for great heights after their success. Readers of the famous travel guide, Rough Guides, have voted Cambodia as the world's friendliest country in an online poll. The kingdom was a runaway winner in the poll, and Rough Guides says that Cambodia was by far the top answer in the poll, and a popular choice among staff members and Rough Guide Twitter followers alike. In the full list after Cambodia, we have the Philippines, Laos, Nepal, Thailand, Myanmar, Indonesia, Fiji, Scotland, and Sri Lanka. Do you agree with this list? Of course we are not disputing number one, but do the others deserve their place in the top ten? We've only visited five out of those ten and want to know what you think. After delays due to the current COVID pandemic, Miss Grand Cambodia 2021 was finally crowned, with the representative from Badenbong being named the winner. The Badenbong beauty held off strong challenges from other contestants to claim the crown. In addition to last night's triumph, she was crowned fourth runner-up of the Miss City Tourism World 2017 and was also the Miss Asia Pacific International Cambodia in 2019. Second place went to the representative from Kampong Cham, third place went to Sihanoukville, fourth place went to Kampot, and the prize for the best national representative dress went to Siem Reap. 
Let's finish today's news with an only in Cambodia story. A luxury Rolls-Royce car bearing the personalised number plate of Mr Idol had an impromptu meeting with a road divider early this morning and, to paraphrase the classic song, I fought the divider and the divider won. The incident happened on Russian Federation Boulevard in Phnom Penh at 2am this morning. The identity of the mysterious Mr Idol is not yet known, but police are confident they will identify him soon. We will leave the link to the story below as the car is extremely rare in Cambodia and worth an absolutely insane amount of money. I think they'll be able to find Mr Idol just by looking for a very rich man in tears. That's the end of this week's news moto. You're now up to date with all of the goings on in the Kingdom of Wonder. I hope you've enjoyed listening to this week's news moto. Don't forget to have a look at the links in our description and check out other people that are making content in Cambodia. As always, we love to recommend other people and we love to see other people doing well. We certainly don't subscribe to the view that YouTube is a competition and there is plenty of room on this platform for absolutely everyone. If you want to join the conversation about this week's news, feel free to drop a comment down below and we'll respond to you as soon as we can. Thanks for watching, thanks for your support, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Here's an extra travel bubble for everyone that stayed right to the end.